Read Elon's tweet on Gamergate 2. Elon Musk tweeted about this. It's not that gamers are, you know, uh, uh, upset about, you know, oh, hey, we have some diversity in the game. It's actually the way that they go about it with pure tokenism, with phoning in weak characters instead of creating strong new characters. And more importantly, it's about a vindictiveness to destroy the past, to destroy the IP, to ignore the source material, and to tear apart these beloved characters in some sort of fitful rage that we don't understand and is very disingenuous. I think he's right about that, by the way. Uh, I don't think that people have a problem whenever a game, like, for example, like, people might meme on Forspoken or something like that, but it's its own IP. So, like, if people don't like the game, then they don't like the game. That's up to them. But I think what people really have a problem with is whenever you go into an existing franchise and you change things uh, retroactively. I think that Mm -hmm. is the tremendous reaction Suicide Squad. And Mm -hmm. this is going to have an immense uh, financial impact. Uh, The way games are funded, you don't use your own money. Even EA, okay? It, it games are hugely expensive to make. They're they're upwards of you know two fifty, sometimes six hundred million dollars. Probably it's Diablo for, Four for certain live games. It's incredibly how expensive they are. And to do that, uh, your CFO is your best friend. You're mm-hmm. counting on your CFO to get you tax breaks, to get you in, to put studios in regions which are financially favorable, and you will borrow the cheap money. You will get a cheap money to do it. Even EA does this. I, I worked with EA. Uh, we were putting together a deal where they were taking um, bailout money from the banks in the last uh, financial crisis that we had. The last and they were one. applying that cheap money towards games. Same thing with COVID money. They're applying that cheap money towards games. And what has been the cheapest money while interest rates were still low, you know, a couple of years ago? It was ESG financing. So this reveals a lot. This reveals that the companies are assuming that it's true. Uh, Big, big assuming, right? Is Mark Kern telling the truth or not? Is he lying? It's hard to say. Uh, He's 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 either lying or telling the truth based off of if you agree with him or not. But I think that if you assume that it is true, it means that the companies are actually only pushing for any of this stuff because it's the easiest thing to do. It's like in a video game where like the most efficient way of farming is by like doing something extremely fucking boring, but like doing it a thousand times and everybody's doing that. And then the developers thinking, oh my God, people must really love this content. But no, they're just metagaming the system. Yeah, you think they, yeah, exactly. And I think it goes back to what I was saying before, right? About how these companies don't, they don't genuinely care about any of these problems or any of these people. And so they're going to take this money and they're going it's to not put real. it into games. But now that they don't have that money anymore because ESG is either being diminished or rebranded because the returns on investment have been so poor on Wall Street for ESG funds that that source of revenue is drying up. This woke machine cannot continue in the way that it is now. Well, of course it can't. But like the reason why is because the content isn't good. And you have to keep in mind, why is it that the funds are drying up? The reason why is because the people that are going after them can't get any other funds. So if you can't get any other funds from, you know, people that like believe in your product, you can't get any funds from people that think that your product is going to make a lot of money. And the only way that you can get any money is if you add in some sort of like fake diversity to it which is basically what he's saying, then yeah, big surprise, that's going to lose a lot of money. Because you're you're creating a selection bias again for the worst possible actors. AAA gaming. And I think, unfortunately, it's so entrenched that you're not going to see... You're gonna you're not gonna see much of an ability to course correct because the studios are yeah so they're just gonna infected. shut down right they're gonna shut down yeah. and this this is truly the rise of double A gaming or what some of my fans call S tier gaming this is you know like Hell Divers like, like Hell Divers Pal yeah. World uh, that the mm-hmm. Diablo West Hell game World, that yeah. came out I last the name of that uh, really incredible success stories in a, in a period where game companies are experiencing significant losses. This, the bleeding will... Con- yeah, people love games. People just don't like games that suck. It's that simple. Continue until... And no one's going to wake up from it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a total nosedive. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's uh, if he's right about that or not. I mean, like, whether this is going to actually just end up killing these studios or not. But maybe, maybe it will. Because it's like, yeah, it's hard to get rid of people like that once you get them in there. For example, do you really think that EA cares about minorities? Do you really think... 
Bobby Cockdick cares about. Oh, oh, there's more. Wait a second. Yeah, they don't really care about these things. All they care about is money. So the moment that they're not making money, they will kick these people out and post about it publicly to like basically as a public execution and everybody will cheer. They'll be happy. But keep in mind, the company isn't doing this. It's not like the company learned, the, you know, they learn from their bad actions. No, they're only doing they're like, say, oh, these people have more money. Well, let's go make these people happy instead. They don't care about you then. The only reason they care about you at that exact moment is because it is beneficial to them. That's it. SG funding and uh, the way pe people bend budgets. You can take that same parallel to like Hollywood, right? There's uh -huh. a reason all those Hollywood films, all the woke Disney crap was filmed in Europe. They were getting like, I think for the Marvels, they got something like a $50 million um, tax break. That's a lot of money. Um, in these tax breaks and you know all this kind of stuff i happen to agree with you that i think <laughs> the money's not gone but i i think it's not flowing as freely as it once was well, it's, it's well after you have long enough for something like this to run its course and people see that it doesn't give returns then people will stop supporting it it's that simple it's not just money. Like you pointed out, different regions will offer tax credits. And these things come with strings attached, all right? right. Uh, political strings attached. And one thing that, you know, uh, everyone needs to realize is that it's not that these studios are funding the games out of their own pocket. That would be very expensive for them. Cash is king. They will preferably go out and get money from other sources if it's cheap enough to help spread the risk of these massive titles. And so you have a lot of quid pro quo happening. Quid pro quo means you suck my dick, I'll suck yours. And I can tell you that um, devs have been approaching me and giving me some inside baseball and what's been happening. And there are deals, funding deals out there for studios, and I can't get too specific. I don't want to mm -hmm. uh, out my sources that have certain strings attached. Like, like, I'll do you a, a favor. Company if you do will me a suddenly favor. sign with a developer, and now that developer uh, needs to hire a DEI director and needs to uh, go out and hire consultancy firms yeah. to. Uh, gender creating a uh, creating a need balance their uh, staff or uh, <laughs> quite specifically go out and hire companies like SBI to consult on their writing and do sensitivity reading and changes for that. And what does all this do? It boosts their ESG score. It allows them access to that funding. So ESG is not going away entirely. It's become an evil ESG is not a bad thing fundamentally. So I'm gonna give you another example of how ESG isn't a bad thing. And everybody is like mentally programmed to say ESG is bad. But please try to just bear with me here and try to listen and think about it objectively. So environmental social governance. Social is only one part of that. Environmental is another. So for example, there are a lot of laws in Europe that disallow people from having single use uh, types of like forks or plates or things like that whenever you go to a restaurant, like a fast food restaurant. So what the ESG would be for in that circumstance with a company like that would be making sure that these companies are compliant with future upcoming regulations in Europe that regard or sorry, that that regulate the way that things happen and the way that things are made in these restaurants. You see what I'm saying? Paper straws and shit. Yeah, exactly. And so if you are investing in a company, do you want to invest in a company that is future proofing itself from regulation or not? Well, I would say you absolutely want to invest in a company that's future proof from regulation. It's common sense. It's reasonable. And any prudent person would think this is a good idea. So do you see kind of how in some circumstances ESG clearly makes sense? I disagree because that's the premise and reality is not the same as words. It's snake oil. Well, I don't think that's true at all. I think that a lot of companies get invested in because they have a, you know, a, they have a future proofed uh, business plan. But you're not hearing about those companies because you're not in the business of I don't know, making air conditioning units like you're not hearing about that because the social thing is what we're always talking about. That's what's controversial. I think that it's common sense. It's it's reasonable 
that people are clearly going to want to invest in the companies that are future proofing themselves from regulation. And that is also ESG. Does that make sense? It's risk assessment. Yeah, it's common sense. And also, like, it, and if people still want to complain about this, would you want the person who manages your money, if you have somebody manage your money, would you want them to not consider this with your money? Now, I think you would want them to consider this very strongly. Would you want them to invest into a company who in five years, their business strategy will be completely illegal? No, you wouldn't want that. Asmon's saying the shit sandwich is fine because it comes with a sandwich. No, idiot. I am saying that there is shit in the sandwich, but the sandwich is not entirely made of shit. I'm not saying that you should eat the sandwich. I never said that you should eat the sandwich. I never said this is good in general. I said there are instances in which it is good, which is true. I gave you an example. I don't think my example is a bad one. And as I see, there is nobody who's actually refuting this because it's common sense. And again, I think anybody, if you were talking to an investor, you were investing your money, you would do the exact same thing. Now, people like to act like they don't because they don't want to... Uh, reconcile the obvious dissonance that they're creating because they're like, oh, I'm supposed to be against this, but then there's this other thing about it that's good. So then, no, I wouldn't do that, even though I would lose money. But I would lose my get the fuck out of here. It's so stupid. What are you doing? What are you? What are some of these people in chat doing? What are you? What are you? Do, you what the fuck is wrong with you? Like obviously, this is common sense. What a waste of fucking time. Let's move on. It's not that um, gamers are... I'll just listen to this. Oh, you know, wait, wait, wait. Studio agreed to do this. How could they do something that's so financially yes. devastating to their games? And it's because they're kind of in this situation where that's the money they can get. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you have this self-perpetuating machine. And I don't think... And that's why it's kind of a death spiral that I don't think you can really escape. The only way you can... Well, they have to get rid of the funds. And they have to re reappropriate the funds in a way that's more uh, weighted towards things that are closer to a financial return. So, for example, like if you're investing in a company that is making sure that their company is future proof from like environmental regulation, this is clearly a lot different than investing in a company that is adding in representation in a video game. Like in, in terms of like the direct correlation of how much money will be needed to spend in order to like change this or not change it. So that's really what the problem is. The problem is that like these two things should have never been combined. If it is to make a good game and if you're already reliant mm -hmm. on esg and you're already reliant on these other fundings because your yeah. games are too damn expensive to make you're trapped yeah that's a great point i think that also parallels to hollywood where i think you're going to see hollywood the 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 500 four 500 million dollar movies mm -hmm. are dead so yeah in general i, I i'm going to be honest right I do uh, think this is a huge problem, about... and I do think also, like, what Mark Curran is saying illuminates such a massive real issue that makes perfect sense, that these companies are only going after these funds because they're easy to get. So, like, and, and I think it makes sense, right? Because, like, it also creates a, it creates a feedback loop of the bad games can't get funding from any other place, so they go for ESG, and then if they're only getting ESG funding because they're bad well then the game's going to be bad so was it really the esg that made the game bad or was it the bad game that had to go for funding and could only get esg you see how this happens right both maybe right but like you can see how there's clearly a feedback loop where bad games will pursue this more often because they can't get other types of funding and i think suicide squad is the best example for that and you can even see that with the fact that even Warner Brothers delayed Suicide Squad because they knew it was bad. The well will dry up eventually. I think it's drying you know, up already. I, I think that you can tell that it's drying up whenever you look at some of these games and you see how unpopular they are.